something that became a real issue, uh, and that was the rise of One Nation. Yeah. Uh, I think one of my failings, to be frank, was that failing, I don't know whether you call it a failing or not, but, you know, Tim was Trade Minister, he was overseas a lot, so wasn't out in the bush. Uh, I was the next most senior. I was tied up a lot on ERC mm. in those early years and so forth. So we were a bit out of circulation, so I sort of wear a bit of that on the chin. But, the, you know, the thing that you say in your book that I think is important in, the, in terms of our handling of that, and I can actually point to the data on this, is that you say in your book that um, you do not, did not believe that, uh, you know, that the thing the media and others kept focusing on uh, of racism was the central driving thing for a lot of her supporters. That's the point you made in your book. Um, as when I became leader of the party and trying to understand this, I had some research done to find out what was motivating people, particularly in rural Queensland. Uh, racism almost never came up. It wasn't the issue they were worried about. It was extraordinary. Some of it was government's things government could do things about. Some of it was not. But the typical person inclined to wander away from off the reservation from our point of view at that time was somebody living in a Queensland country town who'd worked hard all their lives. They felt the pace of change was really deeply troubling and some of it they weren't blaming government for. They would say in focus group works, I've worked hard, uh, focus groups, worked hard all my life um, and now, you know, the kids have gone off to the big smoke where they've lost their way and now I'm having to look after the grandchildren because they're not doing it. That sort of social issue came up quite often. Mm. Feeling the pace of change had overtaken them. But where they got cranky with government, they said, look, we've worked hard all our lives and sure we may get the pension or whatever we get, but where are our aged facilities? Where is our mobile phone? Why are our local roads such a mess? And we moved very deliberately to address what I saw as frankly some pretty legitimate concerns in rural and regional Australia. And I had tremendous help from people like Mike Wooldridge and, and then Tony Abbott in health. They, they were brilliant. Uh, but there were many others who, who sort of helped us recognise that many of those grievances were pretty understandable. I remember you coming back from a visit to a hard-hit Queensland town and you just said to me, John, I, I can't believe how little they have. Yeah, it was Winton. Mm. And uh, that's, that's absolutely right. I remember that conversation. Mm. Um, you, you're being hard on yourself, saying that you, know, you perhaps didn't appreciate it. I don't, I don't think that was the case at all. But you are right in saying that the, the major magnet as far as Hanson was concerned, was this collective feeling that, particularly later in life, she missed out. Yeah. Um, now, there were some mm. racists. I mean, we've got racists, of course. I'm not saying they weren't there, but it wasn't no. the primary motivator no, it wasn't for the most of us. No, it, it was, just wasn't. No, no. We did the research. Yeah, yeah, the primary motivation was that they were missing out on things that mm. they felt that only fair and mm. reasonable they should have. And I suppose you had a situation where a lot of them who had previously been coalition supporters mm. that 13 years of a Labor government. It was a big change of government, a big swing, and um, uh, unrealistically, of course, life doesn't change overnight. Mm. And, uh, of course it, it doesn't. And people felt they were missing out. And uh, that's why I adopted the attitude I did of, of certainly not blackguarding people who supported One Nation. Now, I got a lot of criticism for that, including from when my own party, but I think it was the right thing to do. And um, I, the gun issue um, gave her some support. Um, I think some of the people you were talking about were people who probably in, uh, felt that uh, we were being dictatorial and we were putting upon mm. them and they say, well, we haven't broken the law. Why should we lose our guns? Mm. And some of the pleasure we have is firing them because of that lunatic. and. And can't they do something about lunatics without taking away our guns? Mm. Now, that probably came up in your research. That was certainly an attitude I got. But I think it was, it was always wrong to see Hanson's thing being mm. primarily motivated by uh, racism. Mm. I, mean, I, mm. I disagreed with her comments. Australia wasn't being flooded with Asians. That was a mm. complete misrepresentation of what was occurring. Mm. And, and it wasn't right to infer that Aboriginal people weren't disadvantaged. You can argue about how you remove that disadvantage and there's a, mm. a, a big legitimate debate about that. But uh, her principal appeal was to people who felt mm. that they'd missed out. Mm. And uh, she did it well and they identified with her. 
they felt mm. she looked and sounded like them. Mm.